Come on, go outside. Let's do it. Let's go outside. What? You don't want to go outside. No, you don't. You want to be inside. All day. Every day. Go outside. Let's go. It is about 12 degrees outside. And you can hear a very upset squirrel. Why is he upset? Because the dog's outside. <laughs> Why is the dog upset? Because the squirrel's upset. Am I watching you? So, despite it being 12 degrees outside, I need to go get water. So I'm gonna drive about 30 minutes away. I'm going to haul in about 35 gallons, which is typically what I'm hauling every single week. I know that doesn't sound like a whole lot, um, but when you live in remote Alaska and you don't have, you know, city water, plumb to your property, bringing you, uh, you know, an unlimited supply, you have to be conservative. And keep in mind, it's just myself and the dog. It's not like there's a whole lot of people here dependent upon that water. It's just myself. So I'm going to show you how I haul water in. And I'm also going to bring you along for a couple of other weekly chores that have to be done. I need to bring in some wood and I need to do laundry. Oh, spoiler alert. I don't have a washer or dryer. Come along. Check out how I get things done. Fun fact, when it's dropping into the teens overnight, frosting in the air, everything gets frozen shut. <sighs> Fun. Mm-hmm. 
Getting water in Alaska is a dual sport. You can also go ice skating. That's right. Ice skating and water collection all in one. Now I know that I should be pulling wood from the back of this stack here, leveling this all out so that it's more stable. But I do have stabilizer bars within each of these cords running at various points to keep each layer from toppling over. Now, once I start diving into this pile right here, this bar will no longer be doing its part for the top part of this uh, cord, back row that is and I'll need to start pulling that down. But that'll be next week's project. For now, I don't know if you can see, it is just now starting to snow. So I'm gonna keep um, gathering wood. You're in the walkway. You're in the walkway. And I don't know if you can see my supervisor. He's telling me to hurry it along as well. So back to work I go. Well, I think that's going to do it. I like to keep about a week's worth of wood in the cabin. That's enough to keep me going. Oh, should the weather turn really cold. Um, last night got down um, probably in single digits. It was about 12 degrees when I got up this morning. But, you know, 12 degrees, that's not bad. Um, the wood stove keeps me pretty warm. Don't really get cold in the night. Don't really get cold in the morning. I light it in the morning. And then again, eh, I would say uh, throw in a couple logs throughout the day. And then I really load it up about 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock at night. 
and just let it burn itself out overnight. And so far the cabin has been around, um, I don't know, 55 at the coldest. And that'd be on a night like this, uh, where it gets down to probably 55 or 60 degrees in the cabin by about eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, so, you know, going 11 hours on one burn, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I have no complaints. All right, let's finish up. Oh, I'm not ready. <laughs> you jumped the gun. You have to excuse the sound of crunching in the background. That is Kenai enjoying his biscuit after coming inside. But nonetheless, as I said, I like to keep about a week's worth of wood uh, stacked in the cabin. And again, let me preface this by saying wood heat is the only way I heat the cabin. The cabin is just over 2,500 square feet, uh, two levels. And so, um, you know, it takes a lot to heat this cabin. Um, it might seem like, you know, that that's a lot of wood for one week. And then I'm probably not going to have enough wood for the winter. But rest assured, I have eight cords of wood. So I think we'll be fine. <laughs> This is my laundry setup. It is two enamel tubs that are set upon stands with some five gallon buckets underneath them for drainage and a manual mangle or wringer that I have on top. And they're about 14 inches deep. They are, like I said, they're enameled or they're coated with something so they're nice and smooth on the inside you have to excuse the lighting it's a little bit later in the day um and they have you know a drain hole in the bottom of them where i live there is no water in this area for pl being plumbed into your property so there's no water as far as municipalities go or utilities go as you saw i had to haul water in and that's typically what the people in this area are doing. I say typically because there is a couple of places, according to the state records, that have wells, but they don't have flow rate charts with them. So I'm not sure if they're active wells or if they were attempted and then never finished. Um, according to some of the locals that I've spoken with, nobody has a well in this area. It just, we're not in a good area for getting water. So I do have drainage pipes in the cabin though. As you may have seen in my previous video regarding the squirrel, if you haven't seen it, click up above um, and watch it. It's kind of funny. The water that I use on the property, that water drains from inside the cabin out to a crib or to a French drain. I have both systems set up on the cabin, luckily. And so the crib is out behind the cabin about a hundred feet or so and a couple uh, places where water can drain will go out to that all the black water essentially will go to that and then the french drain takes care of any gray water so all the water remains on the property um but i don't plan on installing a washer or dryer on this property and the reason for that is is that this is my adult fidget toy. <laughs> when I get fidgety, when I got too much energy, this, this is a great way for me to burn off some of that energy. My family, if they're watching this, is probably cracking up because they know that I am the worst when it comes to laundry. I don't like doing laundry in a machine uh, because it's boring. You just put it in and you walk away and you forget it. Well, I don't know. I just, I don't like doing laundry that way, but I do love doing laundry by hand. And I know people probably are laughing at me right now thinking you're crazy. But to me, I get cleaner laundry. I can, you know, maintain the laundry much better because you have to stay on top of it. You can't just throw it in a machine, set it and walk away and go do something else. If you don't tend to the laundry, it just is going to pile up and then you don't have a machine to resolve it for you. So this kind of forces your hand to stay on top of it. These are the tubs that I bought. I bought these on overstock.com. Um, I'll leave a link down below. 
And um, if you're interested, I'm not sure if they're still on there or not, but I really like these tubs. I really love the mangle. The mangle I got off of Amazon and it does a fantastic job. And the whole setup is, is fabulous. I like to use environmentally friendly products in the wash so that I know I'm not poisoning the land. So I do make my own laundry detergent. And if you would be interested in seeing a video on how I make my laundry detergent, um, let me know in the comments down below uh, because there's a million recipes out there and they're all slightly different, but mine, I can guarantee you, will get you the whitest whites and remove the most difficult of stains. Um, and you know, if you're interested, let me know but I don't want to bore you if you're not, so. But right now I do have some laundry in here. I just have a tablecloth uh, in here at the moment. I've already added some laundry detergent. And I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a quick wash and just show you um, how the mangle works. It's pretty simple. This whole process is really simple. This water is really cold because it's been sitting you know, in this tub all day long. And this room is the farthest room from the heat source in the cabin. So there is not really any um, heat in this area of the cabin whatsoever. So when it's, you know, it's single digits outside, then in this room, it's probably maybe I don't know, I guess if the cabin's around 50 degrees, this room's probably around 40, uh, 35 to 40 degrees in here. It's, I wouldn't say it's ever freezing in this room, but it's definitely not as warm as the rest of the cabin. And you know, then when you have your hands in the cold water, you do notice it, but I don't mind because doing laundry like this, you will work up a sweat. So, I've just gone ahead and agitated this in here a bit. This tablecloth wasn't actually all that dirty, so I'm not gonna give it too much more agitation than that. Um, but I am going to, drips water on the floor, which I don't wanna do. I am going to just go ahead and fold it up a little bit here so that I can get it to fit through the mangle without actually getting caught on anything. And just show you basically how the mingle works. So basically, I'm just fitting it in between these two rollers here. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and just give it a couple turns. And all the water then is gonna drain back into um, my wash bin. And then they, all the laundry would sit in that bin. At this moment, I could reuse this water because it's really actually pretty clean still because that wasn't even really that dirty. Um, it's only being washed because I'd gotten a stain on it and I need to get the stain out. And since all the water drains back in here, this tub then can just hold all the clothes or laundry until I'm ready to rinse. And then I'll drain the wash water, fill this with fresh water, rinse the clothes out, wring them out again, and then do at least a second rinse or until the water becomes clear. And in that final rinse, I'll add vinegar, um, just a cup of vinegar. And that will basically eat up any of the detergent that's left and separate that from the clothing so that you have really soft and clean clothes when it's all said and done. And your clothes don't smell like vinegar, trust me. And then I just hang the clothes up to dry. When it was warmer, I hung them outside. And now that it is, um, you know, getting colder out, I have some lines run inside the cabin. And then I just have uh, an old shower curtain that the previous owners had that I lay down on the floor and let the clothes drip onto that um, so that no water is accumulating on the floor. But this is really the best system. I love this because if I had, um, if I had a traditional washer and dryer, right? Even a propane one, those still require electricity. Propane dryer, at least, is gonna require electricity. The washers are still gonna require some electricity. Um, however, 
this is fail proof and this is why i love mechanical systems is first off a mechanical system i can fix an electrical system i cannot i don't know electricity i don't understand motors and things like that um but mechanics i can wrap my brain around and so this is fail proof for me where if something electrical breaks we have a power outage or i run out of propane should i have propane brought to the cabin then I couldn't do laundry, right? And if the drains, the the pipes that run underneath the cabin and go out to the crib or go to the French drain, if they were to freeze, um, which then causes me to have to take the buckets of water and dump them elsewhere on the property, then I couldn't use a washer then either. So this is felt proof. And this is a reason why I plan on continuing to do my laundry this way. One, like I said, it's a great way for me to burn energy and, um, you know, take my frustrations out. But it's also a great way to ensure that I can do laundry year round and not have anything to worry about because it's felt safe. It's really comes down to nothing more than that. I love this system. It's it's fantastic. So it's getting colder outside and I have some apples that I need to use up before they go bad. So I decided that I would go ahead and make an apple crisp and I figure, you know, why not bring you along for that adventure too? But you'll have to forgive me because I am being rather lazy and I'm not peeling these apples. I know I should, but I'm the only one that has to eat it and who am I gonna complain to? Kenai doesn't listen to me anyhow. I hope you enjoy this little cooking um, demonstration, if you will. I don't know what to call it, but the weather has been a little bit odd since arriving. Um, and I say that because, you know, we got a snowstorm the end of September, and then it really hasn't snowed since then. I mean, I think we got just a couple dustings, and, uh, you know, now there's some bare spots on the ground, and we're almost into November. And I thought for sure that we'd have a lot more snow by now. But I did hear from some of the locals that the snow that we got in September was actually really early and unexpected. So I'm not really sure what to expect going forward. I guess I'll figure it out as time goes on. And I'm not complaining that it hasn't been, you know, that snowy. It's allowed me the opportunity to go out and do some things because to be honest with you, my plan is to just stay put over the winter time. I don't plan on going out. I don't plan on heading into the nearest towns, um, which is, you know, where the post office is, is about 30 miles away and where then I guess next major town is, I wouldn't call it a major town, but the next town um, is about 45 to 50 miles away. And I'm definitely not heading into Anchorage or Fairbanks unless I absolutely have to. And right now I can't see any reason to do so. So my plan is to stay put for the winter and just leave to get water, essentially. I know a lot of people would go stir crazy sitting inside of a cabin in the middle of winter when they know they can't really go anywhere the days get shorter and the nights get longer and darker. But I like the dark and I don't really mind being alone. So I don't think I'm gonna have a problem with it. And besides that, I'm so busy with work and you know, making these YouTube videos 
chasing after Kenai and all the things that need to be done around the cabin, I don't have time to think about being bored or lonely. And I, I personally just don't think I'll have a problem with over the winter. It'll, it should be fine. But I do want to take you along for some other adventures outside of the cabin as well. I'm hoping to get out and tour around the area before snow really does set in. So probably, you know, either tomorrow or next weekend, I'll go for a drive and I'll be sure to film so that you can see what I see. And, you know, I just want to include you guys on every adventure that I have. And I hope that you're willing to come along. So if you haven't subscribed, please do. And I hope that you like what you're seeing and that you'll come back to see more of what I have to show you. And I want to say thank you for watching today. And please, you know, feel free to comment down below with anything and everything. I'm looking forward to reading your comments. And with that, I'll see you again next time. And I'm gonna go eat my apple crisp.